Okay, hi, how you doing? Uh, we're going to talk about solving for x now by using completing the square. So I'm going to go through this problem. And this problem says 4x squared minus 8x minus 2 equals the 0. And what you're trying to do here is really find the roots of this function. And the roots of a function are no other than x-intercept. So basically, where does my graph of 4x squared minus 8x minus 2, that if I graphed it, where is it going to cross the x-axis? So we can do this algebraically, and I'm going to do it by completing the square. Um, you could use quadratic formula, uh, but you know once you become quick at this, actually, I think it becomes a little bit easier and quicker. So here we go. Uh, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and go through and do here, is that I'm going to check this and recognize that negative 2 isn't a square number, so that means it can't be the, the square to this quadratic with this. Okay, while well, 4 is a square number, uh, and the x squared, that's nice, but this negative 2 can't be the square because 2 is not a square number. So which means that this negative 2 does not complete my square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move that out of the equation. Say to myself that I've got 4x squared minus 8x equals 2. Okay, so all I did was subtract it or added it to the other side. And then I'm going to go ahead, like my other videos that I had, and just complete the square for this side. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do here again is I'm going to factor out this 4, okay? So when I factor out this 4, and I'm going to get x squared minus 2x, okay? And then I'm going to say that equals 2. So now again, what I want you to note here is that I'm going to be eventually solving for x. So I'm going to get this multiplier away. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to divide both sides by this 4. So divide both sides by 4, divide this by 4. So if I divide by 4, divide by 4, and for uh, my purposes, since I'm going to need some room here and some space, um, I'm just going to erase these parentheses and let you know that literally dividing, all, dividing both sides by 4, what you get here is this x squared minus 2x equals 2 divided by 4, which is 1 half. Okay? So now that I have this uh, equation, what I've got going on here okay, is that this can now be completed the square by itself. And the way I do that again okay, is that this middle term so I'm going to say here that 2b equals this negative 2. So therefore, b has to be, well, divide both sides, solve them for b, is negative 1, which makes b squared then equal 2, positive 1. Okay, because negative 1 squared is positive 1. So then I can go ahead and plug this in. So if I complete the square here, I would add 1. So I would have x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now the important thing is, is that now because I am on an equation here, now, once I add something in, I must keep the equation balanced. So what I have to do is I have to add it to the other side, too. So 1 half, I'm going to add 1 to show my work here, and you get 3 halves. So this is 3 halves. So 1 plus a half is 3 halves. And then what I'm left up here is that now I'm going to go ahead and factor this expression, leave it in its completed square form, which is going to be x, okay, in this case, the minus the b, so plus the b, which is negative b, that quantity squared equals 3 halves. And the last thing I now have to do is that if I'm squaring a quantity, how do I undo that square? By taking the square root. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the square root of both sides, square root. And now what I'm left with here, I'm just going to show my work up here, okay, is that I have x minus 1 is equal to plus or minus, remember whenever you take the square root of something, you must write plus or minus, plus or minus the square root of 3, okay, all over the square root of 2. And please note that by the division law, I can separate these two. And what I now have to do is, at this point is I've got to reduce this, so I can't have a square on the bottom, so I'm going to multiply by what, in this case, uh, what clears the radical from the denominator is multiplying it by another square root of 2. And what I'm left with here is that x minus 1 equals plus or minus the root 6 all over 2. Okay. And the last thing I need to do here would be to add 1 to solve for it. So I get x equals 1 plus or minus root 6 all over 2. And now for me, I can leave it just like this. If you wanted to have this all as one expression, uh, if you use quadratic formula, it's not going to simplify this maybe. So quadratic formula, if you used it, would look like this. It would be 2 plus or minus root 6 all over 2. So those are the same exact thing. But either way, I would have just left it like this because that's, to me, simplest form. So that is solving for x by completing the square, okay? Uh, the nice thing I like about this is that it always comes in reduced form. And like I said before, is that this is now, by me doing having to do one little thing here, it actually puts this in reduced form. So I hope that helps.
Let's try another. <clears throat> and let's just try one that doesn't have a, a leading coefficient that you have to divide out. So let's, for instance, say that I have x squared plus uh, 6x minus uh, 3 equals 0. And I want to solve for x here. Again, what I'm going to do here, okay, is that I know that 3 is not a square number, so therefore it can't be the completed square to this. So what I'm going to do here for this particular one, okay, is that I can go ahead and get rid of it. So I have x squared plus 6x, which is equal to 3. And then what I'm going to do is complete the square just for this part. So by completing the square here, x squared plus 6x, all I need to remember is in that formula, it was 2ab. Well, the x is my a, so this must be my 2b. So 2b has to equal 6, so therefore I can say b then equaled 3. So now if I know b equaled 3, b squared has to equal 9. So then I come up here and I go, okay, let's add 9. So x squared plus 6x plus 9 is equivalent to 3 plus 9. And the reason I have to do plus 9 is remember that we're in equations, so you got to keep it balanced. So 3 plus 9 is 12. So I'm going to write the plus 9 up here. I'm going to put 12 down here. So from here, now all i got to do is go through and do my work. So x squared plus 6x plus 9. This is a, a uh, perfect square uh, trinomial. So I can say that this is going to be this 3, so that x plus 3, that quantity squared, is going to be equal to 12. And the last step to solve for x, remember if I have a quantity squared and I want to get the square of the quantity, I take the square root. So by taking the square root, by taking the square root, I'm left with, in this case, uh, x plus 3 is equivalent to, so plus or minus the square root of 12. And I want to talk about the square root of 12 for a moment. Because if the square root of 12, if I can take 12 and divide it by a square number, then I can factor that out of the, the root. Okay, I can remove from the, 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 re, the under the root here. So this 4, 12 can be divided by a square number. The square number that can be divided by is 4. So if I can take that out, I would have that this is the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, okay, by properties of walls, which means the square root of 4 is 2. So this is plus or minus 2 root 3, okay? And if you don't know that law, um, you, might, you, know, you might want to check it up. I don't think I have a video up of it yet. Uh, I will shortly. But uh, square root of 4 times the square root of 3, uh, you take square root of 4 and you get 2, so 2 root 3. So the last step that I have to do for this one is that I get x is equal to, after I minus 3 from both sides, is negative 3 plus or minus 2 root 3. And that's my answer. And those are, happen to be my roots. And these are in exact form uh, because, remember, a square root is an irrational number, so therefore it's a never-ending decimal. Uh, this is an exact form, but if you wanted to calculate the approximations of this, you could go ahead and plug this into your calculator. Just make sure that you do negative 3 plus 2 root 3, hit enter, and then come back and do negative 3, then minus 2 root 3 to get the other root, because this one clearly has two roots based off the fact that it's a quadratic, and this tells you how many linear roots to your polynomial that you have. So I hope that uh, this helps with uh, whatever homework you're doing. And uh, have a good one.